Welcome to your first lesson on transitioning from Mastercam to Fusion 360, the user interface. In this video, we'll take a look at the user interface of Fusion 360, highlighting some important differences and how Fusion 360 adds value to these areas. When you first open Fusion 360, you'll see some things that look familiar, like a command toolbar at the top of the screen and a browser on the left side. Let's start with the one major difference between Fusion and Mastercam, or any legacy tool, the data panel. The data panel is essentially your file management system, like Windows Explorer or Finder on your Mac, except all data is stored on the cloud and is accessible directly within Fusion. Here you can create new projects, access existing projects, upload and access cloud asset libraries, see those involved in a project, and open an extensive library of training and sample models, including sample work holding components from a wide range of vendors that you can save into your projects for easy access and use. I'll open our Gearbox cover project to show you how the data panel offers several benefits. Keeping your data at the center enables a fully integrated workflow within Fusion 360, allowing a much more streamlined process when programming your components, compared to a legacy tool like Mastercam. Fusion 360 contains different workspaces for design, manufacture, simulation, and so on. Switching from one workspace to another displays only the relevant features or commands respective to the workspace you are in meaning you are not overwhelmed with unrelated commands and you only have the tools you need to work with. Switching workspaces doesn't require any data translation, so there's no loss as you move from design to manufacture. Of course, you can always customize the workspace toolbars if you need, as we'll see later on in this video. It's also worth mentioning that Fusion makes it easy to work with multiple files at once. New designs open in a new tab, so all open designs are quickly and easily available right at the top of the window. Now heading over to the right hand side, when you click on your name, this drop down includes your Autodesk account, preferences, any Fusion teams you belong to, and also your profile, which gives you instant access to your Fusion 360 portal where you can organize your projects and files, edit designs online directly in your web browser, export to any number of file formats, and also build a discussions or wiki page for your teams, which can prove invaluable when discussing and sharing information. Within the same drop-down menu, you'll also be able to modify your preferences, including language, workspace-specific units of measure, and graphic settings. Two preferences I want to draw your attention to are both under General Manufacture. The first is a checkbox, Enable Cloud Libraries. If checked, this will allow you to access the asset libraries I spoke about at the beginning of this video. Another useful option, External Editor, allows you to choose the default external G-code editor, if, for example, when post-processing, you want the G-code to be opened in Notepad++, just navigate to where the application file is on your disk and select it. Going back to Fusion, we can see under the Help menu, also at the top right of our UI, one feature that's worth mentioning in particular, the Learning Panel. This is an intuitive tool that knows which workspace you are in and provides tips based on certain clickable actions. The learning panel is particularly useful if you're new to Fusion as it guides you through the necessary steps to complete a given task within a given workspace and acts as a checklist to ensure you have covered the most fundamental features. One last thing to notice on the top right of the UI is the extensions icon, represented by a wrench. This is where you can subscribe to the manufacturing extension, which gives you access to advanced tools for additive and subtractive manufacturing, including inspection. More information about each feature is available at the Learn More link. For more information on the extension and how to purchase it, click the link in the upper right hand corner of this video. Now we're going to take a look at the canvas, the bulk of our UI where all the magic happens and how it differs from Mastercam. The main differences I want to point out are the browser tree, the view cube, and the comments dialog box. The browser tree separates your program into named views, which capture the model orientation, models which reference the design structure, and setups which contain toolpaths. This helps both organize your program and provide quicker access to the models and toolpaths within. Autodesk's ViewCube gives you an easier way to manage design views as it is integrated into the canvas, so it is always available yet remains unobtrusive. You can also set your view between orthographic and perspective. This paired with your named views under the browser tree creates a powerful combination when controlling your program views. 
Next, the comments dialog box allows you to discuss objects or features or make general comments, which are then uploaded to the cloud so they can be accessed both by those with access to Fusion and those via a shared web link on a web browser. This makes it easy to discuss features with key stakeholders quickly and effectively, as you can see when I access our program on the web portal. Now we're going to take a quick look at how we can create a toolpath and how the interface differs from Mastercams. As you can see, the toolpath menu is divided into five tabs that give you access to all of the parameters you would need to control the quality of your strategy. Notice that all I have to do to generate this 2D pocket toolpath is to select my tool and my pocket, as Fusion will take care of the rest, leaving me more time to experiment with the different settings or strategies. Let's now look at how we can customize our toolbars. This is extremely useful for users who tend to use the same function multiple times during their workflows. To add an icon to the toolbar, just hover over it, click on the three dots on the right, and you'll be able to pin the icon to the toolbar. If you make a mistake, all you have to do to remove it is drag and drop anywhere outside of the main toolbar. Similarly, it is possible to add your favorite icons to the list of shortcuts that's available by pressing S on your keyboard. So if, for example, I wanted to add engrave to my list of shortcuts, all I need to do is click on the three dots and select pin to shortcuts. And if I now press S, you can see that the desired toolpath has been added to my list. It is worth mentioning that these shortcuts are workspace specific and will change if, for example, you're in the design workspace, as you can see. Using the S key also allows me to search for commands in that workspace and select them from the dropdown, where I can also pin them to the shortcuts menu with the up arrow. It is, in fact, possible to create a keyboard shortcut for any tool that you want to access quickly and painlessly. Let's say that, for instance, I wanted to create a shortcut for the engraved toolpath we just saw. Just repeat the same clicks as before and choose Change Keyboard Shortcut. Here you'll be able to create your own shortcut as a combination of modifiers, such as Control alt or Command, and alphanumeric characters. One last thing I'm going to show you is the right mouse button menu. If I right click anywhere on the screen, I'll have access to a series of commands that include, among others, undo, redo, and a repeat of the last functionality I've used. So, if I wanted to access a command I have just used, all I need to do is hold my right mouse button and drag it upwards where the repeat action is. If I right click again, I can now quickly access some functionality that's specific to the tool I just accessed. This will make repetitive tasks much easier to perform. This video covered some of the main differences between Fusion 360 and Mastercam's user interface and where Fusion 360 adds value. In the next one, we'll take a look at the data management and collaboration tools available within Fusion 360 and how they can help you further streamline your manufacturing process.